Hey folks, Nala Train Tutor back in the studio. I'm back with another realistic rock series video for you. Yes, in this video, we're going to be tackling sandstone. And we're going to be covering the striations and I'm going to be covering the yellow colours that you need to do to get desert sandstone and throwing a little bit of flavour in there. Before we jump into the technique, guys, remember if you are subscribed, unless you ring that bell and get notifications, you've only actually got a 16% chance or a one in eight chance of actually seeing my videos in your feed. So ring that bell. And if you are gonna give this technique a go, remember there's a link down below to the Terraniacs group. It's 19,000 strong now, so jump in the group on Facebook and post your stuff on there, or post it on normal social media and tag me in it, at the Terrain Tutor on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And finally, if you really like the vids, remember there's links to patrons and PayPal down below. It all helps keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me bringing these techniques for you. So, shall we jump into it? Come on. We're gonna be using this Woodland Scenics mold to cast up the rock face we're gonna be painting. First job is to level it off, and for that, I'm using a damp rag just to keep it relatively level. Next up, it's time to mix our casting powder, and for that, I'm using Cristocal R. This is a casting powder used for making industrial molds. It's incredibly strong, and it's mixed two parts powder to one part water. Once it's poured into the molds and, and slightly leveled off, I give the table a good bang to loosen out any air bubbles. Now you can use a vibration table and you can pre-soak the molds in wet water, which is water with dish detergent to stop the bubbles, but I just find this way quicker. After about 10 minutes, it's ready to demold and it's strong enough to come out as a single piece with no worries. Next job is to clean it up a little, removing any of the little flash bits from where it's overspilled the mold lines. And then finally, picking out any air bubbles I didn't manage to bang out of it. And there you have it, the perfect rock mold for us to crack on with painting. So come on, let's get cracked on. So here we've got our rock, okay? And this is our cast rock face from Woodland Scenics, but it's quite angular, okay? Now sandstone is a much softer rock, and so it tends to be a lot smoother, doesn't have the sharp ridges, it, you know, especially at the top where it gets worn down by weather, wind, erosion, all those sort of things. So the first thing we need to do is just change this up a little, otherwise it's not gonna look quite right. Now to do that, first one I wanna do is I wanna put in some nice striations. So I've got a bit of a rasp here and all I'm gonna do is just drag it across the surface. This is to put in nice deep striations into it. And with that done, you can start to see the striations going in, but it still looks angular. So our next job, a little bit of sandpaper, and all I'm gonna do is just gently drag this across all the top surfaces. With that done, oh, a little bit more there. <laughs> you basically just gotta get these ridges off. Sandstone is very smooth in general. And so look for any sharp ridges. I thought I'd done, but different perspective. You're always learning something new, aren't you? Always see it in a different light. So that's smoothed down. You can already see how less angular it is. There's one final thing that I want to do, and I want to introduce a load of smaller striations. And for that, I'm using a wire brush. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just drag it across the surface. And with that all done, as you can see, it's looking rather nice. Okay, now there's one final thing I need to do is basically just clean all the dust off. So I'll get this cleaned up and we'll come back once it is. So that's our cast rock face, all smooth. We've got our striations in there. And if I very quickly, you can see the difference that sanding and, and the scraping has done to the pieces. Yeah, it's quite a different piece now. Now, uh, when it comes to colors, uh, when we think of sandstone, the majority of the colours are that sort of browny, creamy, really light sandy colour, hence sandstone. But sandstone can have some other colours in as well. Now for the browny, creamy one, which is the main focus of this video, yeah, I've got a couple of colours here. Well, I've got three. I've got Nutmeg Spice, which is a nice warm brown. Yeah, a mid-brown, not too dark, not too light. Yeah, we've got our Potter's Clay. Yeah, which is sort of a mixture between uh, a cream and a sort of warm mid-brown. 
Yeah, so that's Potter's Clay from Wilkinson's. And then finally, we've got a warm beige. And I might even get a little bit lighter and go a little bit creamer. We'll just have to see. Now, on top of that, what I've got here is I've got some burnt sienna, okay, which is a, a really ready warm brown. Now, sandstone can be quite red. It can be very red, yeah, but even the brown ele elements can have... Uh, red elements of sandstone in them, yeah. Uh, and so they, we're gonna use this to add a little bit of flavor, but these are gonna be our main colors. Now there are sorts of, it, sandstone is a soft stone, okay? And so there are other sorts of sand soft stones, such as limestone, yeah, which is sort of bluey in color. And it really depends on the mineral content in the actual rocks. But most desert sandstone is yellow. Yeah, so we're gonna start off and with our nutmeg spice, we're just gonna give the whole thing a good base coat. So I'm just gonna get this, I'm just gonna go along. I want just one layer. Yeah, but I wanna make sure, enter all the recesses. I wanna make sure that it's not glooped up anywhere, which is gonna take it a while to dry. Yeah, so we're just gonna get this paint, a little bit of water help spread it along. Yeah, and we're just gonna get that in. All those lovely nooks and crannies. I do love this part. And we're just gonna paint this up in this nice, warm, nutmeggy brown. So, I'll bring this back once we've got it painted up. So our nutmeg spice brown is pretty much dried. As you can see, it's not an even coat. Okay, you can see areas which are a bit thinner than other ones and other areas which are quite thick. That's perfectly fine. Variation adds to the realism. Now, I don't just want to do that light sandstone color. I want to throw a little bit of that red in there. And so what I've got on my palette is I've just put a bit of burnt sienna on and I'm going to grab some of that. I'm going to throw it into that brown and I'm just going to mix it up. Yeah, and then immediately you'll start to see that ready sort of sandstone color. Perfect. A warm brown and another warm brown coming together, just shifting it more to the red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna plaster this along here. Yeah, I'm gonna get it pretty much everywhere if I can. Yeah, I'm using my thumb, I get a bit messy when I do this. Yeah, so I want this sort of orange striation near the bottom to be truthful. Yeah, same time, I wanna grab into it, get into some of these recesses. Yeah, quite often you'll get the orange showing through, yeah, where it's worn down. It's almost like the orange, when it's the lighter stuff, is sort of on the inside, if you get what I mean. And so as it gets worn down, it's lighter on the top, but it does have that orange bits at the bottom and in the recesses. So that's what I'm trying to replicate. Yeah, so look at the recesses and I'm just getting my, my nice warm terracotta -y sort of brown in there. Yeah, now you'll say, oh, just a minute, Boastical. Yeah, that's some quite stark sort of contrast there you got there. Yes, I have. It's okay, we can do that. It's perfectly fine. What I'm gonna do now is grab a bit more of my brown, drop it into this red. So it's, it's in between this color and this color, okay? And guess what I'm gonna do with it? I'm gonna put it in between this color and this color. Yeah, so I'm gonna come along here. Yeah, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of blending. Yeah, oh, that's a bit excessive there. Cheeky bows. Yeah, and at the same time, I'm gonna grab these and all around these sort of areas, I'm gonna blend the edges, leaving that richer color in the recesses. Yeah, and that, what you call it? That mid-brown. Yeah, our mid-ready brown, sort of on the edges. Now, I'm not using water for this. If I flush this with water, Okay, it's gonna carry this red pigment, it'll start to run down. And a lot of sandstone, yeah, it, it's colored and shaped by erosion, okay? But mainly sand erosion, sandstorms, stuff like that. Very little actual rain, yeah? And so if I flood this with, oh, what you call it? If I flood this with water, we'll start to get like a wash effect, which will throw it off. Now you can get wash effects on sandstone, but typically where they've got earth on top, so, Maybe not sandstone, but limestone cliffs, uh, the white cliffs of Dover, they're quite white, but they've got dirt marks that run down them because the earth has been carried down by water. Okay, so you've got that situation. 
Now, finally, all I want to do is get my original brown, yeah, without any in. Yeah, and what we're going to do is going to knock back some of these areas a bit. Yeah, because this is the lighter yellowy. Yeah, so we've essentially only got, what, three different shades on there as the base. But straight away, it's looking beautiful. Let me just knock that back. What I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm looking for areas of strong contrast where my orange paint is perhaps a bit too strong compared to the paint that's next to it. And I'm just blending it in. There we go, looking beautiful. Look at that, doesn't that look nice? Right, next job is we need to leave this to dry before we can proceed with the next bit. A little bit, get it, get gone. I'll get that, don't worry. I'm gonna get that. Little white spot, cheeky, cheeky chappy. Right, so let's leave this to dry and then we'll bring it back when it's fully dry, guys. So it's dried enough now for us to proceed with the next stage. And what I've already done is I've got our potter's clay, which is that warm sort of, or um, between our two creams and our watch it and our mid brown. Okay, and I've dropped it onto my palette. Now that is the potter's clay and then that's the potter's clay mixed in with our nutmeg spice that was already on there. And what I'm gonna do is for this technique, we're gonna want to stipple it. Okay, so I've got a bit of sea sponge here yeah, I'm going to dip it into there, dip it onto there, and I'm going to come down and I'm not going to try and get it into the recesses. I'm going to be coming in down at a sort of angle like that. Okay, so on the top, that angle, on the sides, not upwards, not in the creases. So, yeah, a little lighter on the bottom because obviously there's, there's a starker contrast there. I'm just going to stipple this along. Now remember, as it goes on, it is lighter, okay, than the colour that it will dry to. Wet paint always reflects more light and therefore appears lighter. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, I'm just looking, making sure I'm not missing areas. And slowly, oh, sliding off my, my backer, should start to see it coming together. I need to get it a little bit in the recesses just to break down that, that contrast. But I don't want to push it in so far that, you know, the back disappears. Then I'm going to go for my actual potter's clay colour. Yeah. And it's going to be lighter even then. Now, because I'm stippling this straight onto paint that's already wet, yeah, immediately... Yeah, it'll help it to blend in. I always do across the top. I always forget the top. Yeah, once again, because it's lighter, I'm sort of sticking to the more lighter surfaces. Yeah, a little bit in the recesses help break them up. Yeah. Next job I've got to do is I want to lighten it a little bit more and take it a little bit towards that final sort of look. Yeah, and so very quickly, I'm going to get messy doing this. Now yeah, let's get us a little bit of this cream. Well, that's nice and thick. Yeah, and we'll throw it into there. Give that a bit of a mix. I'll give this a mix and we'll flash back once it's mixed. So that's mixed in. I'm still using exactly the same sponge as I was using before because it's got the, the original color on it. Yeah, we're gonna dab that in. And you can see the sort of contrast there. Yeah, and we come back in. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna stipple it once again. Oh, look at that. Now, you might panic when you see it like that. Remember, it's gonna dry darker.
Yeah. Final one, a little bit of a bit more, but a little bit lighter. Across the top there, across the highlight. Yeah. And the next thing we need to do is we just need this to dry. So we'll bring it back once it's dry. So that's dried now and it's knocked it back quite a lot. It's nowhere near a stock. I'll be honest with you guys, when I do this, even I have a wobble when I'm putting it on wet and there's a harsh contrast. But you've just got to trust the paint's going to dry. You know what I mean? And it always does, but even, even after how many years have I been doing this now? Even I've been making terrain for 40 years and after 40 years, it still gets me. Now for the final touch, I just want to break this coat up a little and I want to give it a natural a sort of highlight. So for that, yeah, I'm going with my bog standard cream, my warm beige. Yeah, uh, I've got a dry brushing brush, a hog's hair brush here. And all I'm going to do is take the excess off on a bit of cardboard. Yeah, because this is dry brushing. We've used all the techniques in this one, haven't we? We've done wet blending, stippling. And once I'm happy that I've got the majority of it off, I'm trying to avoid clumps. Yeah, big splodges. Yeah, I want fine lines. All I've got to do is come down, and when I do this, it's important that you go downwards and you cross the striations. If you go a long ways with this technique, what's possibly going to happen is you'll put the highlight into the striations and they'll disappear. Yeah, if you drag over them, you'll highlight them up. So, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's just finish this off. Yeah, just start seeing it coming together. Those striations starting to pop out. And Malcolm, breathe. Relax. I do get worried, you know. I think it's the artistic process, to be truthful. I don't like talking about the artistic process that much, but I do think, yeah, that it becomes sort of a stage where when you're creating something, you just don't know how it's going to turn out, even though you've done it before. Yeah, and so there's just this nerves built into the whole process, but you just got to trust the techniques, trust what you're doing. Knock that back a bit. If you do over highlight, just drag a finger over it. Yeah, it's amazing what a single finger can do. There we go. Now it is slightly off because it hasn't dried yet as before, but it's broken up really nicely and it's got those sort of looks now i'm going to do a little bit more i'm going to I don't know if i should go a bit heavier on this one let's give it a go don't know how this is going to turn out hopefully i don't screw it yeah that's a bit better i think stop beating yourself up folks it's beautiful and there we are. Uh, should we go a little lighter? Do you know what? I don't think there's anything to gain by going a little bit lighter. I think that's about it. Right, let me dry, let me clean up, and I will bring this back, guys. So that's our piece all dry. And I'm kind of glad I didn't go any lighter, to be truthful. It's turned out beautiful. Now, straight away, yeah, you can see our browns and our ready browns embedded there, going up to the sort of sandstony sort of uh, beiges and up to the creams, and it works well. The dry brushing has worked, so we've kept our, all our striations and they're in there, and they look really nice as well. A little bit iggledy-piggledy on the striations, but it's okay, sandstone can be like that. Sometimes they're regular, sometimes they go all over the place, depending on what's happened environmentally and geology and all that sort of stuff. Now, you may think that the contrast is a little bit sharp, and I think just in that corner, perhaps it is, okay? But above all, it's a personal preference thing. Yeah, first off, you don't need to include the burnt sienna and you can just go for your browns and your cream and just go for that natural sort of yellow brownie sort of standstone. I wanted to show you what you can do if you could throw in a bit of burnt sienna. You can put more burnt sienna through all the colours and turn it into that sort of ready sandstone as well. That works really well. 
But above all, the important thing is to understand the principles of blending those colors in with your base color using a stipple, okay, rather than a dry brush to get a more overall color to it. Yeah, dry brushing will leave a lot more of this darkness in the recesses. So the stipple doesn't do that. So it gives you these nice flat colors. But with it being flat, it does need highlighting. Hence, we come in at the very end with that dry brush. Now, as I said, it's down to you how, whether you want the strong contrast or whether you want to sort of mix 50-50 of those two and start as that as your base color with a really nice gradual sandstone. I particularly like this because it's got the contrast yeah, so that it looks good at a distance rather than close up, okay? The reason being is that you look at tables mainly at a distance, so it'll look good at that sort of level. If I was doing sandstone and I wanted it for really up close work, yeah, I'd reduce the harshness of these contrasts, okay, and keep it a lot more mute, yeah, because that's more realistic close up. OK, it's basically a uh, table level to eye level. That's all the difference is. But overall, that's how you do sandstone, guys. Yeah, just using warm browns, highlight it up. Make sure that you don't get rid of any of your sort of recesses. And remember, sandstone isn't just about the actual, what you call it, the colours of the rock. It's the shape of the rock as well. So remember, if you're using rock casts or if you're making your own, avoid sharp ridges, smooth them off with some sandpaper. If you're making out of foam, same thing, sand it down, get it smooth, get your striations in there and it'll look beautiful. Right, let's wrap this up. So that's it for this technique, guys. Remember, if you're after more rock techniques, you'll find them in the Hills, Rocks and Cliffs playlists on the screen right now. And if you really like the channel, then you can also subscribe or support it on Patreon for extra benefits. And in the meantime, guys, let me know in the comments what rocks you'd like me to cover in future videos, and I'll get cracked on with those, and I'll see you soon. All the best, yeah? ta -da.